that's how it happened the first time. One second, I'm a goner, and the next thing I know, I'm at the Ann Arbor Public Library. Home sweet home. Mom left when I was five. As for dad, well, let's just say he wasn't much of one. And that's when it occurred to me, this thing that just happened, it could set me free. And if she could run away, so could I. We interrupt this program to bring you a special report. This is Cheap Seat Reviews. Hello, and thank you for listening to Cheap Seat Reviews, the podcast that explores the Hollywood film industry for the greater good. The greater... Bamf. Good. <laughs> oh, that was great. Oh, my gosh. That was fantastic. Nice. I, was, I was curious as to see what you were going to do with that. That's really clever. <laughs> <laughs> oh man fully work from 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 sam yeah that's no that was I, if only we were in stereo <laughs> yeah that'd be that's cool right? oh my gosh do i have a way to do that uh i don't know <laughs> i guess i technically can i could actually do that i could record your initial in like the right speaker and it, oh that'd be hilarious <laughs> oh. Oh, i don't know anyway it would only work to if people are listening to it on like yeah. You know. Anyway, um, not, the, not the point. The point thing. is, is anyway, that yeah, this yeah. is episode 337, 337, and tonight we're talking about Jumper. And Jump around, jump around. Get up and up, get up get, and get, get down. Get up and get down. Yeah, yeah. Jumper. So <laughs> uh, I'm definitely going to have to give the synopsis on this movie in just a minute because there's been a lot of confusion about what Jumper is. On the social media, as I've been, uh, you know, uh, advertising that this is our next movie, so this is going to be an interesting episode. I'm Sean Allred, <laughs> and joining me tonight is Andrew, that poor library, Jimison. <laughs> Can I say the word moist? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> You've okay. already said it once, so I mean, <laughs> well, <laughs> it was moist. <laughs> so, yeah. Yes, it was. Cold and moist. And then and then eventually like broken or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. yeah not not a good not a good thing to happen. Yeah, I just felt, sure. I felt bad for that, that that place, you know. It's just like right? could you imagine coming in on Monday and there's a an apartment in there? You're just the <laughs> librarian, you know. Yeah. Just no. Coming no, to not a, again. Not again. Yeah, exactly. You know, first we cleaned up half of the Hudson in here, whatever it was, the the river he was in. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, no, you're not you're you're not wrong. It's it's weird. Yeah. Uh, okay, and Sam, holy Kristen yes. Stewart cameo, Batman, Vector, right? And 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 we'll get to that here in a second. But Sean, yeah. just so you know, yeah. If I could take you anywhere in the world, if I could turn back. anywhere in yep. the world, yep. I would probably, uh, I would bamf you up to like something very, very high yeah. and wiggle and that's wiggling and then bamf out and you'd leave you there. Oh, okay. Wiggling. Yeah. The, yeah. You know it would that... have to wiggle. Like, I know you don't like heights, so yeah. I'm hoping you lose balance and, and fall to your death. Oh, okay. Sam, you you yeah. do know that bamf is, is an acronym, right? No. Yeah. I thought it was for, what? Stands for badass mother. Yeah. <laughs> really? Nice. Oh. It does. I didn't know. That. I, I thought he was that. just doing the nightcrawler. So if thing. someone if someone calls you a bamf, that's what they mean. I thought he was just doing the nightcrawler thingy. <laughs> yeah, okay. No, I'll take great. it. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, take it. Jump all over that. That's cool. Because all we're right. Jumping around. Uh, oh, right, cool. So this is 2008 Jumper, starring Hayden Christensen, directed by Doug Lyman. Uh, not to be related with Josh Lyman. And 
<laughs> starring also Sam Jackson and the girl from the um, Iwo Jima. Uh, the commercials, the ice cream commercials. I know she's from a lot of other things, but most recently she she's in those. Uh, Rachel Bilson is her name, but she's in those. Mag- ice cream? Yeah, it's those ice Magnum cream. ice cream popsicle um, commercials. Oh, the ones that are supposed to be like sexy ice cream. I guess. I mean, she's in a very attractive girl, and there's like a, a, a car accident, and there's a like a cooler ice cream truck on the road, and she yeah. just jumps all over the cars and goes and takes ice cream because, you know, when she's an attractive girl, she can do that kind of a thing. So, yeah. Okay. okay. You tell me that the creators of that ice cream didn't go, let's call it Magnum. Because when people think of Magnum, they either think of Tom Selleck's mustache, which also makes oh. them think of yeah, we all do the other Magnum, or they think of Magnum-sized condoms from Tro- Trojan. I, so it, there we go. Yeah, I don't know. It, you're not wrong. It, it's a, it's a weird name for an ice cream. Yeah, it's just a weird name for an ice cream. It, it makes it, there's no connotation to ice cream in the word Magnum. No, like none at all. So. That's just weird. So anyway, uh, yeah. so the director man that what did this movie, Doug Lyman, uh, has directed some other stuff. Um, I mean, the the poster on the front of the for the movie even says from the director of The Born Identity and Mister Mister Kosh Mister and Mrs Smith Smith Yeah, easy for me to say. Comes Jumper. He also did Edge of Tomorrow, which is the Live Ooh. Die Repeat movie. See, I mm, I like his style. I really do. I like all three of those movies that I have said, as yep. well as he's done some other things called, well, he did something this year called Locked Down, uh, and he is in the uh, pre-production of Live, Die, Repeat, and Repeat. So apparently they're making a sequel to Edge of Tomorrow. Ooh. He's also doing a Cannonball Run thing. And something with called Burt Reynolds. I don't. I, I, it, it's just announced, so there's nothing. Okay. With Burt Reynolds, I don't. Wasn't I don't, he in Cannibal Run? He was. I he's don't dead. Think, yeah, I was gonna say I don't think he's coming back to to. A, it doesn't matter to he, make a cameo. He, well, I mean, is, is, you, honestly, you're not wrong. I mean, they could. Who yeah. knows? You know, they could always just CGI his face onto somebody. Yeah. So. Just get somebody with a mustache. Anybody with a mustache. You're yeah, deep fakes are getting. Hi, I'm yeah. Burt Reynolds. Yeah. Pretty accurate. <laughs> Boy, it's like he was on the podcast. <laughs> so so anyway, my point is is that so this director has got some skill and he's he's done some yes. good movies and again He's got a great vision for, for what he shoots. Let's just say that. He does. And the problem is per, maybe personnel. You know That's all I gotta say. Uh, I, I kind of felt like as halfway okay, so let's do this. Let's do this. We're gonna start yeah. here. Jumper. What is Jumper? It is a movie, obviously, 2008, directed and directed by the man that I just talked about. This is the synopsis. A teenager with teleportation abilities suddenly finds himself in the middle of an ancient war between those like him and their sworn annihilators. Wow, that's a big word for a synopsis. The sworn annihilators. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. So, <sighs> yeah. So this movie, okay, Jumper. So the reason why we did this movie instead of what I screamed at the end of the last week's episode, which was supposed to be gross point blank, is because at some point, either I didn't see that it was no longer streaming or somehow I conflated that it was ever streaming. But I'm 90% sure it was streaming and it it stopped. So I'm asking you guys uh, last night, hey, Andrew kept referring to the to push as jumper, kept getting it confused with jumper, and uh, I mentioned, you know, some other people have mentioned it too on Twitter. So let's just do jumper, so we can kind of have a side by side comparison, especially mm-hmm. since these movies came out like five minutes apart of each other. And this is totally the movie because I, I did end up watching last week's movie, but this is totally the movie I thought last week was okay was going to be for some reason or another. Sure. So, yeah. So, so I'm just, I, I, I'm, I'm changing the order of things real quick. I'm just curious, off right off, you know, before we do our, our score, our out of 10, before we really dive into the meat of the show, I'm just really curious, your, be, between this movie or Push, 
Just give me a which one would you rather watch? Just this real movie. quick. Definitely this one. Yeah. This one. Okay. Interesting. Even with the problems, this movie. And yeah. I would probably maybe agree with you, but right now it's like 51% jumper, 49% push. And by the time we get done with this episode, it might be back the other way. Because I, okay. th- I think personally that push is a better movie. Murray phrase. Uh, I still think I like push a little bit better because I like some of the concepts a little bit better. Okay. But anyway, so we'll get there. So now that I've done a lot of that kind of weird prerequisite stuff, we'll just go ahead and do our normal show, you know, five word reviews and things like that. And uh, I guess we'll just go ahead and do that now. Sam, we'll let you start with your five word sure. review. And once you're done, let's just hit it. Just just d- dive in deep with the big the big problem that is jumper <laughs> or the big problem okay. of jumper. All right, I've got two. I'm going to start with the, my first one here is neat concept, bad acting, Banff. Okay. And the 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 crux of all this uh, is Hayden flat ruins good idea. Mm-mm. I thought his acting was inc- incredibly atrocious in this movie, and I feel like he alone destroyed what might have been a franchise. Uh, with this, because you you knew that you knew they were thinking about it. It was you know written all over the face of this thing, and he has the the range, the emotional range that his friend Kristen Stewart, who also appeared in this movie, seems to have in her movies. It's just it was. I I enjoyed this movie except for him, and unfortunately, he he is the only guy in this thing, uh, or you know the lead actor or whatever, and it just. It was painful to watch him act, but I love the way the director showed the teleportation, showed the powers of teleportation, showed the different ways it could be impacted. I liked the weakness that came with it. Um, I think the uh, Samuel L. Jackson's, not district, what they call themselves? The Paladins. um, The Paladins. I thought they were a little OP because if you think about it, how are they even catching these people? Um, other than being extremely lucky uh, and being at the right place at the right time. Yeah. Um, but I, I enjoyed the heck out of this movie, except for the acting. And if it wasn't for him, I think this movie uh, would have done a lot better. Would it would have been a lot better. I was, I was curious to think if we were going to um, compare this a little bit to Valerian in the city of a thousand planets. Again. Yeah beautifully d- directed, you know, in terms of what it looks like and yeah. the interesting aspects, but it just, I think the acting destroyed it. Yeah. And I mean, he is, he, he, his acting d- has not improved since the prequels. Yeah, I know. And I almost feel bad that we're going to get subjected to him later. Uh, that's some news that I'll, uh, to, I'll release later at the end of the, towards the episode, but yeah, I, I'm, I am often wondered, I've often wondered. That's not a phrase. I often wonder <laughs> um, when a casting director is putting the you know the casting team as well as the director producers, and they're they're trying to get leads for movies, right? George Lucas mm-hmm. fell in love with Chris, Hayden Christensen for some reason, and and cast him in in those those two movies, uh, episodes two and three, and. I think most people outside of uh, Hayden's mom would agree that he, he was kind of bad in those movies. Yep. And so, but it wasn't a career killer, obviously, because he's gone on to do some other things. I just, I want to know what he is doing in auditions that make directors go, oh yeah, he's, he can be the lead of a, of a, of a, of an mm-hmm. action, romantic, funny thing. I just, it just not, it, no, it didn't work. It absolutely did not work in this movie. And it's, it could have been so much better with, with somebody with a little bit of charisma, right? Yeah. Just a little bit. I mean, he's pretty, right? Yeah. Like my wife is here as I actually, as I record, she's, I'm looking at her now. She's actually shaking her head. You don't, you don't find him attractive. No, not even when he took his shirt off. <laughs> okay. All right. That's fine. 
So, so my wife, who has discerning taste, obviously, uh, <laughs> is even even is not. I think he's a, you know, an, a I guess an attractive guy, well, but I mean, and that's that's what it is. He's he's incredibly attractive, and I don't know how far away was this from the prequels. Well, the the third one aired in ninety nine, and then o two, and then o five. So this is three years yeah. after the prequels. Okay, so again, mm. now <clears throat> I will say that I comparing this to the prequels, I think that he did better in this one. But having said that, I still agree with everything you said, Sam. Yeah, I mean, don't I mean, this is an interesting concept. It really is, um, and. and I would have, and I guess to my other complaint in this movie is that it goes nowhere. Right at the end of this movie, nothing has changed. Well, uh, except Sam Jackson is stranded. Yeah, but he's still alive. Yeah. Right? Oh yeah, and I mean, and I mean, well, they had to I leave him he, alive for the sequel. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's just it's it's literally nothing has really changed. Um, at the end of this thing, and it. That bothered me a little bit too. That they, they had such forethought that this was going to be a hit and it was going to be a you know a series that they didn't have an ending. That a good you know even Star Wars: A New Hope had an ending for God's sake. Well, I think well they didn't know there was going to be more of those, but I think that one yes, I think this this movie reeked of sequel bait. They wanted mm-hmm. to do a sequel. The other thing that really stood out to me as um, as like a I'm sorry, I just got distracted because I just got a text message about something. Sorry. Um, something else that really stood out to me for the movie is that my pro- I guess I'm, I'm having a hard time here is because so Sam Jackson's the bad guy, right? Mm-hmm. But why is he the bad guy? Because yeah, movie... we don't know why the paladins <laughs> are are so against these people, right? Right. We have no we have no background to this. Yes, thank you. That's where I was trying to find. I keep getting distracted. Yeah, have, Sam, you're the problem. We the have problem no here. origin story, uh, you know. And even the even the IMDb thing the, says an ancient war. What what and, ancient war? Why? And I got nothing from this movie that said there was an ancient war between these two groups. I mean, there was a slight mention of. This has been going on for a long time. Yeah, but that's it. Yeah, that's you're There's right. No backstory. I wanted some more world building. This is only an hour and a half long movie. Yeah, I mean, I'm okay. Give me 15 minutes. I want some. I want some 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 quality Diane Lane time at the headquarters of this. You know, they're basically they're like the Kingsman, right? Because like he's able to Sam Jackson is able to walk into anywhere and say. Oh hey, I'm CIA or I'm NSA. Like he, so so obviously this is deep pocket. I mean, like is this is this funded by the Catholic Church? You know, yeah. like like give me something so that I care because frankly, I don't really care that they're trying to kill these things because the jumpers. Because I mean, I guess I'm supposed to feel bad because he's the hero of the movie, but in all in unfairness, he is a thief. I mean, he's yeah. not exactly a good guy. He's just a nice guy, but but we're missing motive. Yeah, for for both sides. Yeah. Well, well we, we do know that the, the jumpers can't really help. You know, they they just do it. Yeah. And then what they do with it is kind of up to them. But the paladins, what what is their motive? Well, the yeah. the, the the only two motivations we ever really get one is Sam Jackson screams out a lot. Only God should be able to go anywhere yeah right so it's a there's a god thing happening and then the other thing is that um hayden christians keeps trying to tell him i'm different so i guess that there's a past where these jumpers go on to do horrible things in history yeah is there a cut somewhere that shows us that backstory yeah or that reason yeah. you know show start the movie of you know, a medieval time or something. I don't yeah. know. Figure to do something to show us why society or this organization would hate these people 
and and I'm all for it. Yeah, but I, we just never know. I, I like the idea of like that of like the Knights Templar standing around the circle with the the round table with you know whatever, and in the middle is is tied up a a jumper who's trying to jump, but you know he's unable to because of the magical chain or something that they have, and. Uh, and you know, from from this point on, you know, we will dedicate our lives to 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 ending these people because they killed the Pope or something. You know, like give us a reason. Yeah. There's 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 no motivation. You're not wrong in any of that. So, all right, Andrew, what's your five word review? Well, I've got two. Number one, it's kind of already been said, but I'm going to say it in a different way. Hayden Christensen's voice annoys me. <laughs> I agree. Okay. I don't. I. I, I you agree. Know, you know that Nick Cage is probably the the actor that I I detest the most. Sure, but Hayden Christensen I think is taking his place. Interesting, because I uh, Sam's right. Like there's no it, there's no emotional range. It's just we get what we get, and it's mostly it, I, it's almost whiny. I don't know if it's whiny is the right word, but he got the same thing in the Star Wars films that he was in. And I thought maybe it was a character choice or a character trait that he was doing in, in Star Wars, but it's not. It's just him. Yeah. Um, and I just, I don't like it. He's he's not good. He no. The movie itself, I still don't think is completely terrible, but he is the worst part. Um. Yeah. His his jumper friend that he runs into. Well, I don't know if you want to call him friends, but uh, what was his name? Jamie. Is that was his name. Jamie Bell is the Jamie Bell. Yeah. No, that's the actor. R- yeah. 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 Um. You know, I thought he's great, and his the stuff that he did, I I really enjoyed, and the girl, I thought she was fine, and then the younger versions, I thought were fine, but he just he's not good. I think yep. he needs to do Geico commercials or something. Well, here's the, <laughs> I will admit, so as I do, I, I go back and I, re, uh, I have to watch a little bit of it, of course, when I'm pulling clips. And I went back and was pulling clips for the intro, and um, I realized young version of him is a better actor than old version of him. Yes, I, wish I totally they could, agree. I wish they could have just cast him. Um. So anyway, totally agree. Yeah. So my other five word review was, eh, it's just okay. It was just okay. Yeah. So it's not a great film, but it's not terrible. There are things to like about it. Um, But I think we've already decided that we need more to the story to make this a good movie because we're missing too much. You know, sometimes you can be okay in a film if there's a piece missing and you can kind of, you know, interpret for yourself what it's supposed to be or what part, you know, what the part that's missing. You can fill in the blanks for yourself. Yeah. This one, I think there's too much missing for us to do that. And it it does come from a book. Maybe the book has uh, more detail and more backstory and like Sam said, maybe there's a director's cut of this somewhere that's got a lot more that was maybe just cut out. But uh, what we got is not enough on its own, in my opinion. Yeah, totally it agree. Feel, it, it, it feels like they they just scraped together some stuff from cutting room floor, and there just mm-hmm. wasn't quite enough to make a good movie. Yeah, again, it makes me wonder, because this director has done some, I mean, again, The Born Identity is a really good movie. And, yeah. And and the reason why it's good is not just because Ben Affleck is, is good at acting and action, but it's just, it's a well-crafted movie, and, and, you, and they're believable characters, and we got some world building, right? Like, we don't get all of the picture, but we get enough to know, okay, Treadstone is a bad thing, and... They're trying to kill Jason Bourne. We're not a hundred percent sure why, but we know that he knows something, and that that they need. You know, like we get enough of the world building to 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 know what's going on. And then Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Again, it's such a fun, kind of weird concept that these 
you know, these two, you know, married couples <laughs> that are that are. I mean, it's like like there's something yeah. weird and fun about that movie. And again, there's plenty of world building, right? We get enough. Mm-hmm. We get enough backstory. These guys are assassins, and they work for a creepy voice on the phone, and and who's who's uh, trying to control them. So. I don't know. You're, you, I think we've 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 nailed it. I think honestly, you leave Hayden Christensen in the movie again. He's he's not good in this movie at all, but leave no. him in it. But just give us some more world building. Give us tw- 10, 15 minutes of of more world. Where do these jumpers come from? Why do they do a yeah. thing? Like I don't need to be spoon fed, but I just need a little bit more. Just a little, give, a little more context. Give me more here. dialogue by uh, uh, Jamie Bell about why. They're after him, or why? You know what? Yeah. They, talk about an an a, a wasted opportunity to to do some exposition. He just comes off as grumpy and and wants to kill him back because they're trying to kill him. Yeah. Well, you know, just, you know, just let me know what's going on. Why? You know, why they tried to kill him in the first place? So. I think that one thing, one of the notes that I wrote down when I was watching this is we never see a jumper like all the jumpers we see are around the same age. You know, we never see a 60 year old jumper or somebody Mm -hmm. that's been around the block. Like, so how do we know, how do the, how does Jamie Bell's character know that there has been this ancient battle between these people? Like, you know, it's to me, you could have had the opportunity to add in even a throwaway character and it it doesn't have to be a, a big name, just some random guy and have them, talk about you know when they were in their 30s and now they're 70 and just give us a little backstory give us some context yep yeah, yeah i yeah I, yep. I yeah i think to your point about why there's no old jumpers is even sam jackson mentions to david you know he's been in hiding for 8 years and he said how have you been so successful for so long have you been so even the fact that he's been jumping actively for 8 years would suggest that that's a long time for a jumper to be doing his, his craft. But how are they finding them is my question. You know, it, it looked like he did old school detective work in the vault, right? Because obviously a jumper had to have, have gotten in there and, and stolen the money for sure. But uh, yeah, you know, a jumper did it, but where do you know where he went to? Where did you know did he, where he, 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 you know, where did he go from there? And it just seems to me like it was... They needed, again, yet another little bit of a key to the mystery of how to find these jumpers um, and, and arrest them or, or kill them like they were doing. I guess so, it just comes down to like old school police work, right? Where it's just, yeah, um, you know, he the reason why they were able to find track David is because, um, you know, David makes d- does a dumb thing and by putting his buddy or his, his bully, high school bully in the vault. Right, yeah. like that's how they eventually catch up with him. So, I mean, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I mean, because because basically, you just got to get close to these the jumpers. Mm-hmm. Once you get close to them, you you see their rifts. You can, you know, you can track them that way, or you at least can get to them. They can't just immediately escape you. Yeah, is what I got right. Yeah, I mean, and they have these, you know, different machines, and apparently electricity screws up with, you know, screws up your jumping ability and stuff like that. So, I don't know. All right, yeah. so so my five word is uh, teleporting thieves turn heroes, kinda, <laughs> kinda, Beca- and only kinda again because they're just fighting paladins. Yeah. It's not like yeah. Hayden Christensen's gonna go put on a cape and cowl and actually turn into a hero because. There's a scene in the movie where he's, you know, he's in his fancy apartment, and yeah. he's watching the river, and these people are dying, and he just kind of makes a face like, "Huh, oh, well, I guess someone should too save bad those." For them. Yeah, too bad for yeah. them. I'm gonna go yeah. and sleep with this girl in London, and then go surf in Fiji, and and like, it just. He didn't yeah. use his powers for good. Yeah. With great power comes great responsibility, yeah. and he had no responsibility. He did. And, and by the way, <laughs> I will say the little cave he left uh, Samuel L. Jackson at the very end was in Horseshoe Bend, uh, in the Grand Canyon. So it's not like it was the middle of nowhere desert. He would have eventually been found. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Again, I, yeah. this this movie one hundred percent. I mean, 
I know Kristen Stewart because because Twilight came out the same year as this movie. So we we only knew Kristen Stewart as the little girl from Panic Room and a couple other yeah. small things. She hadn't hit her break yet, but the fact that she was still kind of a known thing and all she does is answer the door, it does kind of make me think that the sequel was supposed to be her fighting him. She's taking on the mantle of, from her mom as mm. a paladin. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. it, it kind of felt like that's yep. what they were setting up um, and that somehow Sam Jackson and his white hair was going to come back. and so weird. That was just, it, it it's is, so, yeah. It's, it is weird. But I know, I know he he really does like every movie. He tries to change his hair, like that's his thing. Or he'll be either wearing a strange hat or a different hair. Really? If you look back through all his movies, he, mm-hmm. he specifically changes his hair for for the movies. Interesting. I didn't know that was a thing. Yep. Um. Okay. So we. It's funny. We both. We've all three. Both. There's three of us. They're all. We basically said for the podcast so far that. We liked it better than Push, but we spent the last uh, 15 minutes basically complaining about the movie. So, <laughs> um, and we all know, and Andrew and I, you know, we, we had a good time talking with Kalia last week about Push and that it does have some yeah. problems. Uh, acting being one, story being part of the other one. We, you know, we kind of felt that it was trying to be a little too complicated than, than what it needed to be. Um, yeah. But that's okay. Uh, so some but of at the, least at least the people in last week's movie had had X Men type of abilities where there was different kinds of people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that was that was kind of fun where there were different kinds. Whereas this one, it was just just teleportation. Yeah, but in those worlds, you have all these different rules that that have to go along with it, which is some of the stuff we complained about last time was the rules of the power, and I kind of got that this in this movie. You know, there were some scenes when he would jump. And he would take stuff with him. And I know in some he was touching it. Like, for instance, the water went with him because he was touching it. Um, or it was close to him. But there were other scenes where he would jump and nothing was displaced, nothing was damaged. And then you would see a scene where, he, like, when he took his dad to the hospital. I mean, the hospital room was, like, demolished when he landed yeah. there with his dad. And so I feel like there was some, not a lot of clarity with the rules Continuity, of, of how, yeah. yeah yeah, the continuity. That's what it was. Um, so, yeah. you know, how it, do you, like when he's taking the room with him, when he's trying to move the whole building, you know, he hears the story about the guy that tried to do that. So that's why he's, why he's trying to do it. But how does that work? Like, how do you, is, do you just think about the object or do you have to touch it? Hey, what's the, what's the rule? Well, it did. Uh, I, I don't. We don't really know the rules, other than we do know that Jamie Bell says at one point, who I think is actually the best actor in the movie. And Sam yep. made the yeah. point earlier, and I wanted to jump on and agree, jump ha, on and agree that we needed him to do more than just be angry teenager. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, I wish yep. he could have had more of a, um, you know, a stick. Yoda, um, other insert other sage guy. Even as a a young guy, he still could have been that. Maybe he had a teacher. You know. Anyway, yeah. I'm, I'm going back. Or, to or we... for God's sake, for for you know, he was all about uh, saving himself and staying alive. Train Hayden Christensen to help you stay alive. Or yeah. you know, there's there's motive in that to just instead of just being angry, guy peeing in the Coliseum. So. But you're back to your point where we're talking about, you know, the rules of the jump. So it felt like to me, you know, when he was first figuring it out, he was out of control, and that's why the room would shake and stuff was flying. And and then as he, then the next time we see him, he's in his apartment and everything is fine because he's in control. And like I think his emotions affect the jump mm-hmm. because I think so too. You know, when he's calm and chill, there's you know he's able to go anywhere and do whatever. And, but when he's, you know, he's, when he's a little out of control, when he's a little angry, that's when, so like when his dad is, we don't know if he's dead or if he's just hurt, but you know, he's in, he's in pain, emotional pain. And that's why he jacks up the floor at the hospital. Yeah. Yeah. And then (laughs) 
going back. But and, tell us that, or or at least at least broadcast that fact. Yeah, I don't know. I I picked it up, so it didn't really bother me that that stuff. I to me personally, I'm like, okay, these these feel like the rules. When he's upset and angry or scared, he's got some default settings. When he's scared, he goes back to the library or the river for some reason. Like those are like core reset functions to his mm-hmm. OS. I don't know. That's not a very good explanation, but. Um, um, that stuff personally didn't bother me. Those those types of things didn't really bother me. Um, some of the other stuff, little other nitpicky kind of things, though. Like to your like to your point about sometimes he's touching things and sometimes not. So like he can jump when he's in the car and it doesn't take the car, but if he's touching water, he touch the water goes with him. They're mm-hmm. around him, you know. Like yeah. Like when does when does he get to choose and when does he not get to choose? I don't know. Anyway. Those are not the things I'm going to worry about. Here are some of the things that I did write down that I thought were interesting. Uh, and I'm glad you mentioned the building in the story where it's like the rule in the in the movie, right? If you're going to show us the gun at the beginning of the movie, then you have to use it by the third act, right? So yep, if you're right. going to tell us about the guy that tried to jump the building who killed himself, then you know someone was going to try to jump a building and he jumps a, a room, which I don't know if you guys noticed it, but he's doing this, he's like attached to the walls, right? And he's right in front of Rachel Bilson, like right in front of her. And he's like convulsing. And all I could think of is that without special effects and shaky cam, that probably looked really <laughs> weird. <laughs> <You know? laughs> like, oh, you're going to you're gonna stand here and we're going to have these things attached to you. And I just need you to convulse while you're like... like just well, and, and, and isn't the question too... Is he? Are they trying to come up with like the chosen one story here, right? Mm. Because uh, he did the 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 house move. He was able to jump even when um, even yeah. when he was being electrocuted. Yeah. So I just it felt like so so many weird parts of this movie just were not complete. Well, that's a trope that I, I wrote down. Is that so we did the trope last week where so Chris Evans is a mover, right? He has telekinesis. And at the beginning yeah. of the movie, he's kind of not good at it. And by the end of the movie, he's able to bend bullets, basically. Yeah. And and we're just kind of okay with that. It's like, okay, he, he got into several fights, and so each fight he gets a little bit better at his craft. This felt like Caden Christensen got his butt kicked until the end. <laughs> Like he wasn't very good. He wasn't very good at fighting. First of all, he he was no, physically no. fighting. He was bad, and um, and that's fine. There's no reason why he should be good at that. But it, but you're not wrong. It felt like he he went from level four to level ten because the strength of <laughs> because the power <laughs> of boners is more powerful than the power than than electricity. You know, I mean. Yeah. You know, because yeah. she's like, I'm sorry I said those things. I, I, She doesn't say I love you, but I think I would have maybe vomited a little bit in my mouth if she said I love you, and that was what the that was the Popeye moment we needed. Because <laughs> um, that's a trope too, right? This kind of a Popeye da, 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 moment, da, da, right? Da, da. Yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he's able to jump a whole apartment. So, I don't know. Da, 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 da. Yeah, exactly. Um. By the way, just for, off, just off the top of your head, do you guys have a favorite Popeye moment you can think of? We've we've I don't know if we've ever done that top three before, but I, there's a specific one that's been on my mind for re- recently. I don't know if you guys have one that you keep uh, at all. I know I'm throwing you on the spot here. No, no I'd, I'd have to. Think I'm sure about I have it. one. I, yeah, I would have to think about it. Yeah, and that's fine. Uh, again, the only reason why, so I I think I mentioned a few weeks ago, I got Apple Music, so I've been downloading film scores like crazy, and um, my kids are helping me pick stuff because they listen to it in the car on the way to and from school. So I downloaded the the uh, the theme to American Tale Five Goes West, and and I love that movie. It's so it's such a fun movie. And there's a scene where the tiger, the cat, who's trained to be a dog, he has his Popeye moment when the spider, the John Leguizamo spider, threatens Miss Kitty, which is his girlfriend. And he has this yeah. great, like, crazy bark, and then the music just amps up, and he goes on, like, a, a little spree where he takes out all the bad cats. 
And I love that moment. It's so great. Anyway, it's just <laughs> for right now, for the last week and a half, that, that scene has lived rent free in my head. So anyway. <laughs> uh, uh, okay. Um, let's see. Good thing she had a valid passport so she could fly with him to, um, to, to Rome. That was super convenient. Uh, let's see. Oh, I also wrote, I bet Mace Window enjoyed kicking the butt of the guy who cut off his arm. <laughs> Just that was probably kind of, kind of fun yeah. to do. Do So do you think that, going back to just the skill, you know, we see later on in the movie that when Hayden Christensen and Jamie Bell's character, they're jumping in, I think it's at the subway, or the, no, it's the airport. People see them, like the little kid sees them. But do you think this is a little risky to do in public? Like if if you're standing there, because you you don't you don't know who, like where the people are looking. You just know the area that you want to go or the place you want to jump to. So people are gonna see you. I mean, <laughs> I, I don't know. I just I couldn't help but to think about that as they were jumping everywhere. And then at one point he's on top of the Sphinx, and. There's people walking around the tourist attraction yeah. of the pyramids and the Sphinx. Like, I just, I don't know how. How do you not see a six foot guy sitting on top of the Sphinx with a lawn chair in a subway sandwich? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're not wrong. You're not wrong at all. Um, and not even just the fact that they're jumping into places that could, people could see them. There's, there's a little bit of physics problem there. What if he jumped into a person? Mm hmm. You know, I, I mean, like, he's jumping into a crowded airport. Isn't that what uh, uh, Night? Um, oh gosh, the X Men guy, Nightcrawler. Wasn't that Nightcrawler? What wasn't that his thing? Where he he had to see it, right? He had to see it, or he had to know what was over there, or he, you know, otherwise he'd end up in the middle of a, a wall or something like that. Yeah, the, I I don't remember from the comic, but they made a big deal about it in the movie where he said, "I can yeah. only jump what I can see." Now in this movie, they can only jump to places that they've been to. Or yeah. you know, so like he can look at a picture of the Empire State Building, remember the rooftop, and then jump there. But again, if there's someone up there in the spot he was standing, do they explode? I mean, I know this is, sounds really <laughs> gross, but like, I just it feels yeah. like if you were gonna ever do that, I mean, and maybe you know, we don't we don't live in a movie, but if we ever had this ability, I would only ever jump into places I know people aren't ever gonna be. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, like totally agree. like jump in the back alley or the, I, I don't know. It just, it just seemed weird. But you're not wrong about not a the, good plan. Not a good plan. Not a good plan. <laughs> I don't, I'm not going to try to pull it up. <laughs> so uh, let's see. The, the, I feel bad for all the bystanders who got jumped to all different parts of the world. Dude, the guy in the truck. Oh yeah, the, the poor guy, the, the poor the bus guy, driver and. Yeah, the bus yeah. driver. Did he die? I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah. The bus driver and the the guy in the truck got ran over by a freaking tank. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. It, it, like this so it's this like, movie oh. is a dick to bystanders. Bystanders. Right? Yeah, <laughs> it, you're not wrong. Uh, that, that was a description of our uh, of our podcast there. Yeah. Good bystanders. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, standards. Oh, nice. Oh, and that is 100% the name of our episode. <laughs> yeah. So nice. The last note I have was. Oh, no, that was it. That's all my notes. Um, I got some notes. Yeah. Oh, please hit, hit, hit us with your notes. I, I usually, you know, I'm, I usually just kind of go with the flow, but this time for some reason I just felt like taking notes. We got to see Yondu in a different place. Yeah. We haven't mentioned him, right? You're right. I, yeah. I haven't seen him in anything other than The Walking Dead and the Guardians of the Galaxy. So when I saw him, I, I remembered when I saw him that he was in this. And I thought, oh, that's cool. Uh, and he was a much better actor than Hayden Christensen. Absolutely. And he had more of an arc than he did, than Christensen yeah. had. Right? Yeah. Kind of, you think he's a jerk, and then you realize he's... He's protecting his son. Yeah. So. Uh, one one thing that I wrote down that really kind of bothered me was the scene in her apartment where where there he kind of jumps around demonstrating to her his powers, and then he jumps with her to the to the lair, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So Sam Jackson and the guys come in there from the the Paladin group, 
and spray the stuff. Okay, how can oh, we no. only see one scar, first of all? And how do they know that's the one to go into? Right? He's been jumping all around the apartment. And to me, I mean, we, we mentioned that equipment that they're using. How do they know that that's the one they need to use the equipment and that there's going to be people on the other side? Yeah, well, plot. I don't know. The script told them to. I mean... What you're asking is a legitimate good question. The questions my brain thinks of is like, what was he spraying? Was it just hairspray? Like, how did they determine, how did they find a chemical that shows the jump scar? It was just Glade. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, did, breeze. Did, yeah, did, they just, right. did they just take with them one day a bunch of different chemicals? Like, they're all fighting and they're like, there should be a way we can aerosol something that we can see the jump scar. And so or was better like, yet, you know, you know, explain this organization that has all these assets that and information and yeah, technology just, that would go after them. Now we're, now we're we're back to the original. Give us some backstory again. Like this yeah. is feels like because we keep hearing about God now, and he pulls out some knife that looks very ceremonial, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So so give me so so either the movie is the church is trying to kill these people, or mm-hmm. not, but don't give me half. You know, so either they're mad at you because you can do this because God only can do that. So therefore, you know what I'm saying? Like, not only show me the sacred knife, but put like a rosary on it or something. I don't know. Maybe they don't want it to be associated with the Catholic maybe, Church. Maybe but... there is a prequel out there that we just never heard about. Well, you said this is based mm-hmm. on a book, right? Did you say that? Yeah, it's ba- it's based on a book. Well, maybe yeah. the book has all that stuff in it. I don't know. There's, but Maybe so. But I shouldn't have to read to, to know these things. Right. Right. Yep. You know, I don't know. Just. Yep. Agree. The only other, well, I have two more. Yeah. The, uh, so when, she, when he comes back and she's at the bar and, and she sees him. So her, her mom's reaction is, oh my God, you're alive. Like we, everyone thought you were dead. When she sees him, it's like, hey, how you doing? Hadn't seen you in a while. Like, <laughs> It's been eight years, right? And they haven't seen this person in forever. And then she just agrees to go to London with him. And then not an hour after they get there, they're doing it, right? So I just feel like <laughs> there's a lot of really fast Well, they uh, did, they, they did take a plane. Here. So, well, I mean, it would true. be a good nine hours and, you know, waiting around and, yeah. But... <laughs> Uh, I just thought her reaction was not really genuine. Yeah, agreed. Uh, so, well, then, it, it was it was it was a a teenage boy dream, right? To yeah. to get th- this whole movie is really he's picked on. He he gets some sort of superpower, and he gets the girl because he has a superpower. Yeah. Right, and he's pretty. Well, yeah, he turned pretty. He went from an ugly kid to a pretty kid. He was although he really kid. wasn't ugly. He, he was just awkward. Yeah. So I, I, I did a little Google here real quick. This is based on a book, and the book, it feels like he actually does the hero gig. Okay. So, like, he's actually trying to, I mean, like, he's fighting terrorists. Huh. You know, so... So it it feels very different, and instead of it being paladins as they're like some kind of Christian organization, the Roland character is a government official, which would make sense because these people can just rob banks or they can get into government. Yeah. You know, hell, they could gr- grab a freaking nuclear bomb. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, it's yeah, they're dangerous. Yeah. I mean. I can't. I don't blame them for for not wanting jumpers around. Yeah. Anyway, well, last thing I've got. Yeah. And then I'll shut up. Is I really like, and I want to see him do this more often. I love Samuel Samuel L. Jackson as a bad guy. Yeah. I do too. Yeah. Like, I agree. I, he just he doesn't do it enough. He's always his character is always unique, and is always special in some way. Yeah. Um, and I think he's a good actor, but. I want to see him be a villain, like a real villain. This one, yeah, because most of his good guys are are like 
good guy, you know, a guy with a heart, but he's so tough exterior, you know, you, it, you know, he's, he, you think he's a bad guy, but he's a good guy type of right. character. Yeah. So that's, that's all I've got. All right. No worries. Um, anything else, Sam, for you? No, I, we have pretty much covered everything. Okay. Um, everything I believe I, I have wanted to talk about. I just, it's just one of those. It's, it's, it's a movie of holes, basically. So I, I do want to share this one little quick story and then we'll move on to clips. So we all have these movies in our life that have a weird significance to us because of an event that we, we associate with the movie, right? So like, mm-hmm. Sam, you love, you love Jurassic Park, not just because it's a great movie, but because you know, of the significance that it means. Uh, to you and and there's other movies like that that are not even great movies i'm just saying generic movies yeah. that we that for whatever reason imprint on our lives this is one of those weird movies for me <laughs> really and, and it's only because of this the first year my wife and i were married that first year i had about 11 freelance part-time jobs right i was working 30 something hours a week but at like five different kind of jobs you know in a week and my first full-time job offer after we were married, was at a, a, a place in Charlotte. and We were living in High Point. And so I interviewed on Wednesday. They offered me the job on Friday, and they expected me to start Monday. So I literally called up friends that lived down here and was crashing on their couch for about three weeks until I could find a more permanent resident. So my mm-hmm. first night away from my wife, my new wife, uh, the night before my first day of my new job, the people I was staying with, uh, good friends of ours, Nick and Cheryl, watched this movie. Huh. And so I sat on the couch and, and watched this with them, and then the movie went, it was over. They went to bed, and I slept on the couch, and that started yeah, my new job. So, so this movie kind of has a weird place in, my, in the history of my life because this is what kick-started my move to Charlotte some Interesting. almost 14 years ago. Yeah, so... One of those things, right? So, anyway, that's that. Time for Clippy Clips. I have a few, not a lot, but a few. Uh, You know I'm going to have to get the name of the movie if you say it in your movie. Jumpers. 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 Yeah. Uh, Okay, so there's that. Uh, You guys know I love capturing. If, If someone gives me a really good you know, uh, shit or a bullshit, you know I'm going to capture it. So I captured it for that reason, but also because this, I, I kind of hated the way she says it. But anyway, here you go. Well, uh, lingresso uh-huh. means come on in. Oh, I thought I meant bullshit. I don't know why, I just don't like the way she says that. <laughs> it kind of annoyed me. Yeah. It's kind of like she was waiting for uh, her grandmother to pop out from around the corner and, and yell at her. Because <laughs> she whispers <laughs> it almost. It, it's a weird, I don't know, I just, the way she kind of says it and like the way she kind of rolls her eyes, I, she's supposed to be flirty. For some reason, it kind of annoyed me. I don't know what it is. She's a lovely person, I guess. She's I mean, she's pretty. I don't know if she's nice or not. She could be a, a jerk for all I know. Um, this is, so you remember in Spider-Man Homecoming when... Peter Parker is trying to intimidate um, uh, Childish Gambino, and he's like, if you're going to do this part of the job, you need to get better at this part. So this reminded me of that because this was the worst threat I think I've heard since then, only he's being sincere, and Peter Parker was just, you know, he's Peter Parker. So here you go. Just answer the question, or I'll drop you off the top of Mount Everest, okay? Just okay. I, I can't. Are you being serious? I can't tell. Is this a threat? I can't. Like, I know you're scary and you can do things, but the tone of voice and the way you said it made it sound like we're just we're okay. I just <laughs> just answer the question, or I'll drop you off the top of Mount Everest. Okay. Jeez. Oh, <laughs> okay. Um. So this was supposed to be two clips, but it's actually one long one. So here we go. But it's 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 the whole Marvel team up. 
I had to listen to this thing a couple times because not just because Jamie Bell's accent is very thick and I had a hard time hearing what he understanding what he said a couple times, but Hayden Christensen even he rushes through the words so fast that I missed some stuff that he said. So here you go. Every Marvel team up. Yeah, I read it. Um, Two superheroes joining forces for like a <laughs> limited run. See, I see what you're trying to do. Yeah, I'm not buying it. For your own sake, just go home. You live in a cave. It's called a lair. And what's the point? Just saying, you know, we uh, kind of have this common thing. There you go. <laughs> I just, there's parts, of the, so I kind of want to dissect that. There's parts that I don't like about it. So first of all, he says, have you read Marvel Team Up? Is there a comic specifically just called Marvel Team Up, or are they using that as a generic? I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't either. I, maybe we need Corny on to tell us. But Marvel Team Up, it's a thing, I guess. So then he says, "No, we're not going to team up because I'm better off on my own. You need to just go home." And then he says, "Well, you live in a cave." So I, I'm not sure how we got from you need to go home. That and so I'm going to deflect on that and say, "Well, you live in a cave." And he says, "Well, it's called a lair. Who cares?" And then he says, "Well, we have something in common. Is that common thing that we, we both live in caves? I'm not sure the how we got here." <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. The, all jumpers live in cages uh, or I, caves. That's, that's yeah. what I was confused about. Like the, there's. So, there's bad oh. writing there, is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. I guess it's yeah. It's yeah. Anyway, uh, I feel like also that we have to have. I don't know. Whenever we have a bad guy, so it, it by the standards of who you're, by which point of view, right? So in Diane Lane's point of view, her son is a bad guy. He's a jumper, and therefore he is something that needs to be stopped and or killed. And but because which is why we, she left. Yes, I'm guessing. Yeah. And so, but because we like him, right, we're going to get the line. And we get this line also in Pirates of the Caribbean because Jack Sparrow is such a charming guy, even though he is still a pirate. So here you go. So I'm a jumper. You're a paladin. That's right. What now? I'm giving you a head start, son. Because I love you. So, no offense, again, a mother would not hunt down her son. Yeah. Um, but unless you give us some sort of story of why she would have to. I just, I didn't buy that. Well, there's, there's something that we've forgotten here. Sam Jackson knows who she is in relationship to David. Yeah. And he is alive. So maybe, I don't know, maybe... The the next movie, it's Kristen or not Kristen Stewart. It's Diane Lane and him versus Sam Jackson and Kristen Stewart. Maybe we pair mother versus daughter or something. I don't know. Just uh, yeah. Know, like, I think he kind of hints at that when he says, "Who's helping you?" You know, when he's confronting him about how he's made it for eight years. Maybe thinking, has his has his mom been helping him? Yeah. And we do know that she does at some point in the movie. She does it twice in the movie. Once she obviously goes and actively frees him in Rome, which how, you know, mom ex machina that she was in Rome. But also, when Roland says, how many did they send? Well, we only sent two. I said send everyone. Well, she said it would, two would be enough. So she's obviously yeah. in charge, or she's high enough in the, in the hierarchy of, of paladin-ness paladindom that she could make that kind of you know change against uh you know the white-haired uh warrior so anyway uh for some reason i left this in my queue i don't know what this is that's gross oh that's right that was from uh, last week yeah sam i now have this for forever that's gross so it's uh mm -hmm. in case we need captain america letting us know something is gross i got it nice and handy all right and now for some more bad news. Ready? A little bit of trivia, not a whole lot. Uh, the crew, 
The crew was allowed to film inside the Roman Colosseum for three days under three conditions. No equipment could be placed on the ground. They could only shoot from 6.30 a.m. to 8.30 a.m. and from 3.30 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. to avoid disturbing tourists. And only lighting allowed was natural sunlight. So hmm. that is that is guerrilla style filmmaking, mm-hmm. and it looked good too. Though I mean, yeah. you wouldn't, especially you wouldn't since think. there's fight scenes down there. Yeah, um, I did read in one of the versions of the movie where it shows him peeing down there. Um, it's considered very offensive what he was doing uh, in some cultures. So they just show him. There's an edit where he's just sitting on a bench or something. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, Hayden Christensen and Rachel Bilson were engaged in real life when they, they though they got engaged while making this movie. Mm. Uh, but they split up in September of 2017. She couldn't stand Aww. to listen to him talk. I guess. Now, this one is legit sad. This is an actual sad one. I wanted to read this one last. But David Ritchie, a set dresser for the Toronto shoot, was killed while dismantling part of the set. Mm. So that's always a bummer when you hear that, you know, crew died while making a movie because mm-hmm. that should never happen. Yeah. So that's that's a real bummer. So um while we go from transition from that sad news, I'm gonna uh before I play something weird, I'm gonna do this. I uh Sam, uh, you weren't here last week, but though you said you did listen to the episode, which is cool. I'm now yep. doing this here. Ladies and gentlemen, please, if you can, leave us a review on iTunes, Google Play, YouTube. I know it feels weird doing this here in the middle of the episode instead of at the end of the episode, but um, I, I just really would, you know, I, I think we're picking up some more steam. Yes, we've been doing this show for seven years, and I've been more active on Facebook and Twitter trying to get the show out. I would really like to grow the show uh, because I think it's worth growing. I think it's a, it's a good thing, and frankly, we're having so much more competition now that it feels like every other person has a, po- a podcast, especially about movie yep. reviews. So it'd be really nice if we can kind of still stay relevant uh, in the in the field. So go to our website, cheapseatreviews.libson.com is how you can get to our old episodes, facebook.com slash cheapseatreviews, and at cheapseatcast is on Twitter. If you listen to us and you're not following us, following us on Twitter, please do so. I'm now posting there like five or six times a day um, mm-hmm. I've actually kind of really enjoyed getting on Twitter. I'm meeting a lot of new other podcasts and podcasters and having interesting conversations. And it's been a lot of fun. And work has kind of afforded me the ability to do so. So at Cheap Seat Cast on Twitter, please follow us there if you're not doing so already. All right, time for this. Excuse me while I whip this out. Top three, Sam Jackson. How in the world have we done 300-plus episodes and not done Sam Jackson as our top three? I don't know. If you've been listening since day one and go, actually, you guys already did, you just forgot, well, that's fine. But we're, <laughs> we're, we're doing it again. Uh, I didn't have it on my spreadsheet, so we're doing Sam Jackson movies. And Sam, you go first. Oh, I get to go first. Okay. I, yeah. Um, I, I've got a number three. Um, which I really enjoyed. I know a lot of people didn't like the movie, but I liked Unbreakable when he is the Mr. Glass I think of Unbreakable. People, mm-hmm. No, people liked Unbreakable. Did, did they? Did people not like Unbreakable? I heard a lot of people complain it was so boring, it was slow, oh, it didn't do anything. It's a slow um, burn, but it's got such a payoff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Um, my number two is Black Snake Moan. Okay. You get to hear some Samuel L. Jackson blues being played and... And reverse slavery images on there. It's kind of crazy. And then my number one, number one in all our hearts, number one in, in, in the world is Jurassic Park. Oh, sure. Yeah. <laughs> God, yeah. You've got to put him in Jurassic I for, I Honestly, yeah. I was... Hold on to your butts. Yeah, yeah. I forgot he was in Jurassic Park, and yeah. uh, it 100% makes sense that you could... When you're able to actually do the <laughs> Jurassic Park... And it may actually works. I'm excited for you. <laughs> because usually you try to shoehorn it in there and it doesn't work. His right arm yeah. was in the movie longer than the rest of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah he gave Laura Dern a, a, a pat on the shoulder. Yeah. So, job well done. 
Well, and it's funny, uh, you mentioned Jurassic Park, is that recently uh, in what's happening with my work stuff, you know, the whole, uh-uh-uh, you didn't say the magic word, that whole that whole yeah. bit, and he says, I hate this hacker crap, or whatever he says. Like, yeah. That's been our life at my at my college for the last three weeks, <laughs> is, uh, is that. All right, so I go next, because again, Andrew has the best lists. So I'm yeah. going next with number three as Coach Carter. The basketball. Okay, movie. yeah. I like that movie a lot. Number two, Sam, you mentioned um, Sam Jackson as being a bad guy more often. I'm going to put him in as Kingsman, in The Kingsman. As oh, a, yeah. As a I forgot about that one. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's really good in it. and he's, 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 I mentioned his character as being unique. That's a really unique one. Yeah. Yeah. Not And not just the fact that he has a funny accent. and, and Right. And he like even, it's, it's a quirky person. Yeah, it's a weird yeah. dude, and, and he's so... He, he he throws up at the sight of blood. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, it's, exactly. It's, it's a, a villain who throws up at the sight of blood, I love it. Yeah. It's just, that's such good, that's such an awesome idea. I mean, even <laughs> even at his own death. Yeah. You know, there's, there's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of quirkiness, and he's such, his convictions are, you're like, well, okay, I can, I mean, you're, you're crazy to want to kill a third of the planet, but. You know, okay, fine. You're just drunk. And what I wrote down, I'm actually changing. What I originally had was the negotiator, but okay, I I'm switching that out because I frankly forgot until this very moment about right now one of my favorite movies. Like right now, you know, it's it's just my happy, good time, feel good movie, and that is the Hitman's Bodyguard. Still have not seen that thing. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm dying for it. To, We're gonna do it somewhere. As soon as you know they're screen, making a sequel, right? I do know that. Oh gosh, yeah. The uh-huh. Hitman's Wife's Bodyguard. Yeah. Yeah. And and so Selma Selma Hayek is is Sam Jackson's wife in the movie, and so she needs protecting, and I just can't wait. Uh, so if if it ever streams, <laughs> Sam, we're gonna do it for the podcast. Yeah. Um, it's that's just one of those movies that. You know, if it's a Friday and none of you guys are playing video games and I just need some comfort food, I'm, I, I have it saved on my DVR. So <laughs> I'm going to watch it. I just, I, I love the movie so much. I really do. Okay. That's that. Time for this. What about Wait, Andrew? Supposed to happen? Oh, shit. You're right. I'm used to going last. Andrew, please. No, no. I get punished. <laughs> I understand. No, please. <laughs> Oh. All right. No, it's fine. It's fine. Let us. Uh, <laughs> so I have uh, at number three, I had the negotiator. Nice. Um, number two, I have uh, Where's My Super Suit? The Incredibles. Oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah. And number one, Pulp Fiction. Okay. Nice. But one of the greatest monologues ever. Oh, yeah. Great. Okay. Now I can play this. Wait, what's supposed to happen? We're going to give this movie a score. So, Sam, you said you did watch Push. Do yeah, you, wanna... you guys scored that sucker high, I thought. I was, I was, I would have scored that like 5.5. 5. All right. I'm going to add that in, and so that affects the, that drops it to a 6.49 on the... Yeah, on the and, and see, I would give this one a probably not much higher, but, but I did enjoy it better, the 6.1. 6.1, okay. One, six point one two okay. out of ten. Yeah, Andrew, what you got? Uh, I'm going to give this. Uh, well, if I based it off of the security guards at the bank, it would be like forty seven. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, <laughs> let's just. <laughs> I can't go much higher than Sam. I, I'm. What did I give Push? Uh, five point seven. Yeah. So this one, I'm going to say five point eight. It's just barely better. Yeah. But it is better, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I'm still not sold that this I like this one better than Push, um, but I don't think it's better. I don't think it's worse. I think they're kind of the same movie. There's so much the same movie that when I when I pull it up on Amazon Jumper, the next thing that comes up is Push. And when I go into Twitter to tweet, hey, we're going to do this movie called Jumper, and I go into the GIF keyboard, to, and I type in Jumper movie, the first three GIFs are from Push. 
So really? even the internet doesn't know that these movies are different from each other. Yeah, I think they were because they came out at the same time, around the same time, yeah. and a, sort of the same concept. It's just easy to get these confused. Yeah. So I gave I gave Push a seven point one one. I'm going to give Jumper a seven point one one. They're they're kind of interchangeable in my opinion. Um, That's fair. I think. Sure. I, I like them both. I like them for both for kind of different reasons, uh, but I don't know. I think Jumper might be a little bit better made. It had a little bit better budget. Um, if you put... And now, here's a good movie. You put Chris Evans as Jumper. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You put Chris Evans in that role. Uh, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm down with that. I think that'd be great. So That fixes 50% of the issue. It really does. I think it'd make... <laughs> Or, honestly, I mean, Jamie Bell, I know he wasn't a known commodity as he is now, but make him the main, the lead. Just tone back yeah. the accent a little bit, you know? If you don't know who nah. Jamie Bell is, he was in Snowpiercer. He was the kid in Snowpiercer. And he also, not his fault, but he was also the thing in the most recent Fantastic Four movie. So we won't, we won't hold that against him, though. And he's in a great series called Turn. Yes. Yeah. yeah. He also, what's the, the, the Irish mafia movie or a TV show that he was in that was really good too? It was like Black, um, Board, not Boardwalk Empire. Was it, uh, no, it was, it was on network TV, but I can't remember. Blacklist? Right no, um, and he was on there also with, um, it's the, 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 the girl from your favorite Cowboys and Aliens movie, um, Oh gosh! I'm looking That'd at his. Wild. I'm looking at his uh, IMDb. Yeah. So you've got, uh, as far as TV goes, the only other TV besides he was also the voice of Tintin in the Adventures of Tintin. We saw him in that also. Well, maybe mm-hmm. that's a different one. Okay, then I'm a, I must be wrong. I'm thinking of him a different guy. Yeah, he was. Uh, he was in King Kong as Jimmy. He was the Jimmy, uh, and then the other TV show he was in was something called Close and True. But he would have been really young, yeah, uh, for that. Yeah, so he was fourteen, I think. Huh. Anyway, he's a young, he's a good cool. young actor. He's got a nice career ahead of him. So, anyway, that's the show, I think. Right? Anything else? Oh, that little uh, other thing that we have that, that I keep forgetting, but I'm gonna do now. So <laughs> I'm gonna play this instead. That's gross. There we go. Uh, this is nice. our game where we play the quote game. I read a quote from my big poster, and you guys tell me, well, not you, yeah. you the listeners, you either tell me by message, which no one has, by the way, or you can just say it out loud. But this one is simple, and I think we all know this one. No, no one, none of us knew the last quote, but this one is, I see dead people. The Black Donnellys. The Black Donnellys. That's, that was the name of the TV show. Is that the same guy? No, no, it was a guy that looks like him. Jonathan Tucker oh, okay. is the one I thought. He he um he is in Pacific. Does he need to die at the end? I don't know. Oh, it's a different movie. Never mind. Oh, you know, Sean, I forgot to do something when we did our first episode in March. Uh, because I wanted to start off the month by saying, Oh, hi, March. Oh, nice. <laughs> I forgot. Nice. <laughs> No, that's okay. It's funny. I actually did see Tommy Wiseau tweet out that. He tweeted that out, oh, hi, March. And I, I laughed out loud. I thought that was pretty great. That even that's he perfect. can can lean into the greatness that is of himself. Mm-hmm. All right. That's it. That's the show. My gosh, this was so much fun, guys. Um, the last little bit that I will do that I didn't already do earlier where I said, guys, go and, and like us and follow us and all those things is that simply... Um, any reviews you can leave would be great and anything you can do to help us out would be awesome. Share the show if you like it. Um, I can, I know that people listen, so I assume that you like the show. The last fun little bit of news is I I teased earlier. So I have two fun bits of news. One, I, me, myself will be, uh, guest hosting on a Firefly TV or a review podcast. All they do is Firefly. So it's four hosts, four, four people. Uh, the host has the host and one of the co-hosts has seen it. The other two people have not seen anything of it. They don't. They they're watching it episode by episode, completely unspoiled, 
And so I have been asked to join them, and we will record uh, in a couple of days. So by the time that this 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 airs, it'll be you know either tonight or the night tomorrow night. So have they seen Serenity? They or have, is that no? Is that no? Okay. Yeah, they've not seen Serenity, or again, they're doing episode by episode. So I'm I'm very excited to get to talk to them. So their 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 podcast is called Sudden but Inevitable Podcast. So if you've seen Firefly, you get that reference. They're called the Sudden but Inevitable Podcast. So I will be on the episode I'm reviewing with them is the Ariel episode where they sneak onto the planet Ariel and steal the stuff. So, so that's that. The other fun little bit of news is we have some more guests lined up. Um, we have Stephen Everett coming on next week and Will Triplett Ooh. coming back on the week after that. And in the month of May, we're going to do a Star Wars month. That's right. We have been asked, and if you ask us to do things, we will do them. So we have been asked by uh, both listener and friend of the show, friends of the show. So we're going to be reviewing episodes one, two, and three in the month of May. So for Star oh, Wars God, Day, oh dear God, for Star Wars Day, <laughs> we're going to be doing the the Phantom Menace. So. It's going to be great. Mm. Looking forward to mm. it, guys. It's going to be a lot of fun. So You would. That's uh, that's the big news. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to that. So the show, we've got a lot of things going on. And and honestly, if you have someone that you think would be good as a co-host, let us know. If you're like, oh, there's another podcast that does something like what you guys do, and they're great. Point us in their direction. That'd be, I'm all for it. I'm all for uh, you know, having guests on that, that are... Uh, well, frankly, smarter than us, which I think is uh, not hard to do. Um, anyway, except for except for Sam and Andrew, they're both pretty smart. Uh, with uh, that being said, it's debatable. Nah, you're getting your master's, and Sam has like seven degrees, so I think I think it's pretty fair to say. And a big headache. Yes, I'm sure you do. Uh, <laughs> a monster so I, headache. So I'm going to wrap this up by simply saying. You guys are awesome. Thank you guys so much for listening. Check out uh, <laughs> big thanks from last week, Pages and uh, Popcorn. Give them a give them a, a, a search, and of course, uh, also hit up our new friends at Sudden But Inevitable Podcast. And on behalf of Andrew and Sam, this is Sean saying thank you guys so much for listening. We'll see you next week, where we'll be joined by Stephen Everett, and we're doing, I think, Outside the Wire, but it could change. <laughs>